before I start, I just want to mention a very quick hadith. The Prophet of Allah, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, none of you will truly believe. He says, none of you will enter paradise until you truly believe. And none of you will truly believe until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. So he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, shall I tell you something that if you do it, it would spread the love amongst you? So the companion said, yes, O Prophet of Allah. He said, give salams to one another. So inshallah, in accordance to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I want to ask and it gives a chance for those that have been sitting for quite a while to stand up and give salams to someone next to you whom you don't know. So inshallah ta'ala, everyone stand up, you can stretch your legs. And those of you who are standing who would like to come down, maybe this is your chance now to come and sit down. The sisters can give salams to one another also. So please, inshallah ta'ala, for, for those brothers that are happy to stand in the back, if you're happy to come down and sit, please, by all means, this is, this is your time now. So please, can we sort whatever it is that we want to sort out now? Can I ask everyone to put their phones on silent, or better yet, switch it off for the sake of Allah? I don't want anyone to record, please, no one to be recording. No little secret. So please, if I can have everyone switch off their phones. Sit down, it's going to be a long one, bro, so sit down. You ready? If we can just sort this out so we can get started, please. Everything done? Finished? We praise him subhanahu wa ta'ala, the king, the master, the sustainer, the creator of the seven heavens and the earth. And we send peace and blessings upon his beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers and sisters, I just want to make something clear before I start. Not for anything personal, but just to let you know. Alhamdulillah, I've been invited by the brothers at one ummah. And... I accepted the invitation, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them, you guys have been fantastic, Wallah, it's been an honor being in this country, today is my last day, I'll be going to Scotland tomorrow, and I'll be leaving from there. 
But I just want to let you know that I don't get paid to be here. I'm not making money out of this. I don't charge for this stuff. These are principles that I've been taught and I believe that this is how our deen was always established and this is how our deen should continue. Now I'm not going to have a go at those that charge money. That's between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I don't charge to be here. I do this for free. I've given up my time, my family, my children, my business. I've given up everything to be here for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, wallahi, only for his pleasure and for the love that I've been getting from the brothers from the UK. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because I don't want anyone by any means to think that I jumped on an airplane for 30 hours to come here and insult you in any way, shape or form. I'm here purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. I'm here because I wasted years of my life, years of my life I wasted, thinking that I was on the right path, only to realize that I wasn't. My brothers, the problem with this ummah are many. And the trials and the tribulations, you can see wherever you go, you see it. I'm not here today to lecture anyone. Wallahi, I'm here to have a serious, genuine, sincere, heart-to-heart -heart conversation with you. You know, my brothers, I'm sure most of you by, by now have come to realize, I like to be straight. I don't like to sugarcoat things. I don't like to put salt and pepper. And I'm not a very politically correct person. Not because I intend to be rude. No. It's just the way I am. Call a spade a spade and don't call it a big spoon. It's a spade. And unfortunately, we're, 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 we're so caught up with being politically correct that we've diluted the message. People are lost. No one knows anymore. The problems with this ummah are many. And I'm sure if I was to go around and ask the boys and who tell me, what do you think the problem with this ummah is? I'm sure, I'm sure I'll have over a hundred different opinions. But I can promise you, though betting is haram, but I'll bet my bottom dollar that out of all of these excuses that we will come up with, not a single person will say that the problem with this ummah is me. It's anyone and everyone's fault except mine. The problem with this ummah are the mashayikh, the imams, the speakers, our leaders, the Arabs, western countries. It's everyone's fault except mine. You know my brothers, there used to be a time, unfortunately a time that I missed in my life. But there used to be a time when people were straight and honest and things were clear. I mean, people didn't beat around the bush. Things were common and known. I'll give you an example. There used to be a time when if someone was fat, yeah, I said the word fat. Today we say the word obese. He's big boned. Whatever makes you happy. <laughs> fat, like me. I'm fat. I know I'm fat. I don't run away from the issue. I know it. But if you were to ask me, brother, why are you so fat, man? I will come up with a million and one excuses. And not one of them will be because of me and my own actions. I'm fat because he runs in the family. I'm fat because when I was young, my mom overfed me. I'm fat because when I got married, I used to this and that and the other. And the in-laws, and you don't understand, I'm Pakistani. And when you sit down, they slam the food down your throat. And this, that and the other. Every single excuse will come up. But God forbid. God forbid. That I should say that I'm fat, that I'm obese, because I do the wrong thing. And there used to be a time when people didn't talk. There wasn't, you know, it's not like some philosophical, you know, people used to sit down and talk about, you know what, I really wonder why he's fat. People knew why he's fat. He eats too much, he doesn't exercise, he eats at the wrong times, everyone knew why he's fat. It wasn't so, today we talk, it's all about theory. And yeah, you know what, and I wonder, I think maybe it's this and that. Why are you running a lot like, why do we beat around the bush for? You know, it's like the man that went to the doctor, an obese man, went to the doctor. So he sat down and he went for an ordinary check, a blood test, and when the results came back, he says to the doctor, let me tell you, man, obesity runs in my family. 
So, Dr. Sisson, brother, it's not obesity that runs in your family. No one runs in your family. <laughs> <laughs> Beating around the bush. Now, look, the only reason why I'm obese is because it runs in my family. No, you eat too much. And what's more than this is that there used to be a time when the solution for being... Because I know there's people get a bit touchy. So let's just stick with the word obese. If I was in Sydney, I would have definitely said the word fat. But there used to be a time where if someone was obese, the solution to lose weight was also something no one used to talk about. People didn't argue. If you want to lose weight, you eat right and you start exercising and you break a sweat and it takes a long time. But today, no. Today I refuse to accept because no one likes the truth. No one likes to admit the fact that it takes hard work to establish anything in your life. It takes hard work. No, we don't want to admit that. So the world is keeping itself so busy and so occupied with solutions to lose weight. There's these shakes, there's this solution, there's this diet. You know, if you go on this drug, this can help you. People are now doing operations on their stomachs. They're cutting their stomachs. They're putting rubber bands. They're coming up with a million, you know, a million solutions to lose weight. And yes, while they're working, they're shortcuts. But there are major, major side effects that you cannot run away from. The solution for your change is nothing more than hard work. Our deal was established on hard work. Don't think for a second that the Prophet of Allah would allow... Don't think for a second that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow the companions to struggle and struggle and struggle to reach the status that they reached and allow you and I who are so corrupted and so far to just enter paradise by watching a seven minute video on Facebook. Doesn't work like that. And when you take these quick fix solutions, it's not the same. I'll give you an example. Are steroids big in this country because they're massive in Australia? Yes? So steroids are big. You get a pencil neck who walks into the gym, looks at these big muscle heads, and says, you know what, I want to get big and I want to get big quick. Now there used to be a time where if you want to get big, the solution was you pick up raw iron, you put them onto the bench, and you start pumping iron, and you go there again and again and again, and it built core strength. And you got big. Today, I don't want core strength. I don't want to go through the hard yards. I just want to get big and big now. Drive through. That's what we want. We want drive through, Dean. Is there a masjid that I can just quickly drive through? Five, ten minutes, I walk away, and all of a sudden, I'm Abu Bakr and Omar and Uthman. That's what we want. That's what we want. We want drive through, Dean. We want drive through solutions. And when you look at a man that's on steroids, you know, and this is what kills me. You know, you know it's one thing to take steroids, but the brother denies it. No, I'm not on steroids. What are you, what are you? you take me for a fool. Last week he was a pencil neck. If a strong wind picked him up, you'll have to pick him off the floor or down the road. The brother walks in, he's got muscles on his ears. Yeah, he's got pimples and marks all over it. All the effects. All the signs of steroids are all over him. He wants to convince me that he got big because he's eating potato salad and tuna. <laughs> and that's what we're doing. And that's what we're doing. The state of this ummah, the problem with this ummah, you know who the problem is? It's you and I. You and I. We make this ummah. And the way that you and I are living our lives is having an effect on this ummah. Everywhere I go, I'm faced with Muslims who are the best people I know. I know every person in this room is a beautiful soul who has a great heart. And I'm not sugarcoating this. Wallahi, I believe in the depths of my heart that every person in this room is a beautiful person with a big heart. And means well. I don't doubt that. That's why I flew all the way over here. But that's not enough. You are a part of the Ummah of Rasulullah.
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers and my sisters, every one of you is valuable. Every one of you is important. <coughs> Don't get caught up in the fact that we're large in number. It's not quantity that Allah is looking for. It's quality. It's quality. My brother and my sister, what you do and how you live your life, it's important. What are you doing with your life? Again, you know, I'm being honest with you, really. You know, I'm not, I'm not here to give you Disney stories and, you know, you know, twinkle, twinkle, little star. And let's just all take photos outside and call it a day. And everyone goes home and jumps on Facebook. A oh, fantastic event. I had the best time of my life. I'm not here for that. I'm here for change. And I hope you're here for that too. What are you doing with your life? Where are you not? How much more time will you waste? Let me cut straight to the chase. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, very, very clear. We did not create jinn and the human being except for one reason and one reason only. You know, so many of us, we struggle so much with this. So what are you trying to say to me, brother? What are you telling me this, that, and the other one? And this isn't important. Yeah, it's not about what you and I think. You and I are slaves of Allah. And when you're a slave, you don't have an opinion. You see, the day that you said, La ilaha illallah. And let me assure you, everyone in this room, being a Muslim is a choice that you make. None of you are forced to be Muslims. None of you. You choose to be a Muslim. You see, I chose Islam. Even though I was born Muslim. I was born Muslim and raised as a Muslim. But what Islam? It was nonsense. It was rubbish. And things didn't change until I woke up and I decided, Hey, I need to bust a move, man. This is my deen. I want to change. For me, my life is passing me by. Most of us don't even know why we're here. We're living a life, and wallahi, with all respect to everyone, we live a life that's closer to the lives of animals than a human being. We wake up in the morning, same thing every day. It's Groundhog Day every day. That is this why I'm alive, to do what everyone else does. And the only time you're special and the only time you shine is when your handbag and your shoes are a little bit different to the next one. <coughs> is this it? <coughs> is this my life? Allah says we did not create you except to worship. Except for Ibadah, my brothers and my sisters. That's why Allah created you. You know, it's amazing. Allah makes things easy and we insist on making it difficult. Allah says, my slave, I created you to worship me. I don't care, my slave. I don't care what car you drive. I don't care what brand you wear. I don't care how big your house is. My slave, I don't care. These things don't faze me. My slave, all that I worry about is you and your relationship with me. And we say, no, Allah, no. Everything else is more important to me than my and your relationship. You know, it's amazing. Allah says, I created you for my ibadah. Worship me, my slave, and I will take care of all of your affairs. My slave, establish your five prayers and I will look after your risk and your sustenance. And you say, Allah, the hell with your relationship. The hell with your deed. I want to work. I want to dress. I want to go. I want to buy. It's about me. And then when things don't go your way, Allah, why are you doing this to me for, man? It's amazing. Amazing. Wallahi, well, it's amazing. You're looking for love in all the wrong places. You're looking for happiness in all the wrong places. It's with Allah. You know, it's because of my deen I can't expose my past, you know. I really wish I could, but I can't. I'm restricted by my deen. 
But I've been there, man. I've been there. I've tried it. I've tasted it. I was there. Any drag, any woman, any club, any car, I was there. I was seeing it, man. When I was 20, I was driving cars. You look at the magazines. And I was empty. Wallahi, I was empty. Going and coming and watches and cars and girls and women. But then what? Then what? What happens after that? There's an emptiness inside me. I'm lonely. I spent my life trying to please him and trying to please her and trying to fit in here and trying to fit in there. When all along, Allah is calling me and I'm turning my back on him. My brothers and my sisters, you are valuable, man. And Allah loves you more than the world tells you. Allah loves you. You have no idea how much Allah loves you. And Allah says to you, I don't care. I don't care about this, that and the other. I mean, imagine, imagine, wallahi, imagine. You know, people try to tell me that us Muslims, we oppress our women. Look at the way you treat them and look how the women have to cover up and look at, wow, 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 amazing. Allah, we oppress our women. Your women are working 24 hours of the day. Fashion is changing every single day. Today it's red, tomorrow it's black. The, the day after it's short, the day after that it's long. Now the hair is up, then the hair is down, then it's this, then it's that. And no matter what she does, she never fits in. It's never enough. They try to tell me that we oppress our women. Living in a world, the more she is like a man, then the more honorable and the more accepted that she is. Allah says, my slave, I don't care. The more you are the way I created you, that's the way I love you the most. Allah says, don't even pluck your eyebrows because I created your eyebrows and I love you. The way I fashioned you is exactly how I wanted it. Today the eyebrows are going up, down, they're thick, they're thin. Now they're completely off and it's drawn on with a pen. <laughs> I know you're laughing, but because they're trying to find the right shape and she hasn't found it yet. And the Allah's watching her. Thinking, my slave, you think you can do a better job than the one I did? Allah says, I created you for worship. I created you to worship me, my slave. And you know, people feed me this, you know, this, look, alhamdulillah, I don't pray, you know. I don't pray, but alhamdulillah, what's in my heart? I'm a good person, man. I'm nice, I'm polite, I'm good to my friend. I think, yeah, all right, that's nice. But that's not what Allah created you for. I mean, it's good that you do good things. That's a good thing. That's nice. But that's not what Allah created you for. Yeah, maybe I'm not the best Muslim. But brother, let me tell you how many millions of pounds is in my bank account. Let me tell you what I've established. Let me show you the car that I drive. I think, Ya Akhil Karim, my beautiful brother and my sister, this, this, it's not why you're here. My brothers and sisters, we are different. Muslims know their life in this world is very short. You're going, you're leaving, you're not staying behind. Today you're young and you're beautiful. Tomorrow you're old and no one looks at you anymore. The day after that you're gone. You're nothing but a memory. This claim of, oh brother, but you know, I'm a good guy. It doesn't cut the mustard seed. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Let's say one of you has a factory. And you advertise in this factory that you need a worker. You've advertised that you need a worker. You need someone in the, you know, whatever, in the warehouse. So someone comes into you, he comes into the factory, and you say to this person, whatever it is, young man, young woman, you tell them, look, let me be very clear with you. The factory is working and operating very well. My business is in tip-top condition. Don't worry about the office. Don't worry about the landscaping. Don't worry about the building. Don't worry about internal affairs. Don't worry about nothing. My business is operating like clockwork. The only reason why I'm hiring you is I need you to move the boxes from section A to section B. 
I mean, is the job description clear? Is there any confusion in why you're being hired? Answer me, is there any confusion? I'm making it clear. Don't get caught up in anything. Young brother, young sister, don't get caught up in anything. Alhamdulillah, this is my business. I'm running it very well. All that I need from you, please, just move the boxes from section A for me. And please, can you just put them in section B? That's all I want from you and I'll pay you your wage at the end of the week. Wallahi, I will. So you walk in. Boss isn't there. You can see the boxes in section A. You see that section B is empty. And you say to yourself, you know what, before I start, let me go upstairs to the kitchen and I'll make myself a cup of tea. So you go upstairs, you make yourself a cup of tea, then you look at the condition of the kitchen and you say, man, this is disgusting. How do these people even live like this? So you say, you know what? I'm going to win some brownie points. I'm going to clean up the kitchen, man. So you start cleaning up the kitchen and you do a fantastic job at it. Then you look at the carpet and you say, this place is filthy. You pull out the Dyson and you start vacuuming. Then you make your way downstairs, you see that the trucks and the vans, they're all over the place, the lorries are everywhere, so you start organizing things, then you started cleaning the driveway, then you started mowing the lawn, then you started doing the landscape. You did the most phenomenal work, the most amazing things you did in that place. You went all over the joint except moved the boxes from section A to section B. You did everything I asked you not to do. Then you come to me at the end of the week and you have the audacity to ask me for a wage. Would you pay it? Would you pay it? <coughs> Why not? You're thinking, look, thanks for the lawn, thanks for the carpet, and thanks for the kitchen. But I didn't ask for that. You did everything except what I told you to do. Every one of us is living this amazing life. I'm sure you're living an amazing life and you've got amazing dreams. But you're doing anything and everything except that which Allah asked for. Then you have the audacity to sit down and think and believe that you're going to paradise. Based on what? Based on what, my brothers and my sisters? We've become lost, we've become confused. We no longer know how to put things in priority. You know, I've got beautiful young brothers and sisters, beautiful souls. I know that they're beautiful. You know, this is me personally. I don't know how you guys feel. But for me, I genuinely believe, Wallahi, even the murderer, even a murderer, if he's a genuine Muslim, I believe deep down in the depths of his heart, there is a beautiful soul waiting to come out. That's just me. I don't believe that anyone is completely wicked. Yes, we're partially wicked. You know, there's uh, problems in the person's life. Yes. But if you're going to try and convince me that any person, well, not even a non-Muslim, that is completely wicked, I don't believe it. There's always some khair in there. There's always some khair. But we've become lost. We no longer know. We no longer know how to value things. I'll give you an example. How many of us, how many of us, we've been given everything by Allah. We live in beautiful homes. Maybe you don't think it's a beautiful home. But go outside and see what's happening around the world. Maybe then you'll appreciate the home that you live in. You've been given everything. We're still ungrateful. We're still unappreciative. You know what I find amazing? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, Oh my slave, establish your prayer. I want you to pray five times a day for me. How many of us don't pray? And I'm sure you have a beautiful reason. How many of us don't pray? Amazing numbers. Amazing numbers of people who don't pray. And look, by no means, it's not my job to judge anyone. Again, don't, don't, don't think I'm here to push and, and, and you know, sit here and judge anyone. I'm the filthiest person in this room. And wallahu alim, I'm not being humble in any way, shape or form. I know my sins and I know my past. <coughs> but I look at Muslims. I tell them, do you pray? Nah, man. Look, yeah, look, I know I'm supposed to be praying, but I'm busy, man. Really? 
my sister and my brother, you're so busy. You don't have 20 minutes in your day to pray your five prayers. Do you know how bad and severe it is to miss one salah? Does anyone here know? How bad it is. You know, today you and I think that look, Alhamdulillah, he's a beautiful guy. He just doesn't pray. You know, religiously, he's the filthiest of people. But today we don't think through the logic of deen. We think through the logic of people. No, 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 alhamdulillah, she's the best person in the world. Lovely soul, very polite, very caring. Everything about her is 100%. It just happens to be, she just has a little problem, she doesn't pray. You know, with Allah, the one that doesn't pray, you know what, let me cut straight to the chase. Let me ask you something. Do you think murder is a bad thing? It's not a trick question. Murder, is it a bad thing? Yeah. <laughs> Let's bump it up. What about rape? You think rape is an evil thing? What about being a pedophile? You think that's awful? I think that's the most disgusting thing in the world. All major sins. All major sins. What about drinking alcohol? Filthy, yeah? What about drugs? Filthy, yeah? Wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, please listen attentively. You could be the biggest murderer in the world. You could be the filthiest rapist in the world. You could be someone who the bottle of alcohol never leaves his hand. You could commit the filthiest of sins. You could do the most extreme and the most bizarre of things. And by no means am I promoting you to do any of them. But you could be a... The absolute filthiest of things. You could do all of this. All of these sins. All of these sins put together. Are easier. They are lighter in the eyes of Allah. Than for any one of you to miss one salah. Did you know that? For you to miss one salah. Is worse in the eyes of Allah. Than any one of you can meet all those sins put together. Some brothers are looking at me, man, what the crack are you on about, bro? Because our understanding's been lost. Your understanding's been lost. This is the haq of Allah. Brothers are telling me, yeah, look, I'm a great guy. I just don't pray, brother. What are you talking about? Do you know what it means to not pray? Do you know what that means? I see young guys getting married. Sisters, how could you possibly accept a man that doesn't pray? Don't come to me years later crying, telling me he's cheating on you. If this man has the audacity to turn his back on Allah, then what hope do you have? <coughs> or did you get caught up with the BMW that came into the driveway? Seriously, my brothers and my sisters, I'm speaking to you seriously. Do not pray. And I ask you why, sincerely, please tell me, why is it that you don't pray? Please, just tell me something. Did Allah ever, did Allah ever once let you down? Has Allah ever failed you? He created you from nothing. You were nothing, you were a piece... There was a time you weren't even a piece of sperm. Then from a piece of sperm, he allowed you to enter the womb of your mother. In three layers of darkness, he designed you, he fashioned you, he sustained you for nine months in the womb of your mother. Who taught you to swim in the womb of your mother? Where was your money then? Where was your business then? Where was your car then? Where was your girlfriend, my young brother? Where was your girlfriend then? My young sister. The guy that swept your heart on Facebook, where was he then when you were swimming in the womb of your mother? Who was feeding you then? For nine months he never failed you once, never. Then after nine months, Allah allowed the impossible to be possible. He allowed something like this to come out of a womb that's like this. 
angels came down, wings were spread, your mother almost seen death, and you came into this world and Allah allowed it to be. With what help? With what aid? My brother, my sister, what is it that's distracting you from Allah? Where was this distraction? Where was it back then? And you came, you were little, you were helpless, you were naked. Allah allowed the blanket to cover you. He gave you a mother that breastfed you. Breast milk with all their technology and all their money and all their science and all their know-how. They still, they still all together, they still cannot produce a formula that is even half as good as the milk that Allah put in the breast of your mother. In summer, he made it cool. In winter, he made it warm. Where were you then? You had hands, but you couldn't grab. You had legs, but you couldn't walk. And he was there for you every day. He was there for you every night. He never failed you. He allowed you to walk. He allowed you to talk. He allowed you to grab things. He allowed you to learn. You knew nothing. He allowed you to learn. You started calculating. You started to differentiate between right and wrong and this and that. <coughs> and now, now my brother and my sister, because you can walk on your own and you can put a sandwich together and you can feed yourself all on your own. Now you don't need Allah. Now you're too busy for Allah. I don't have time to pray. What do you have time for, my brother and my sister? It's amazing. How can you? Ya Allah, you gave me so much. What's he, what's he asking for? Five prayers? Is this so hard? Is this so difficult for you? I'm not asking you to become a chef. I'm not asking you to wear a turban. I'm not asking you to do... No, no, I'm, I'm just asking you to pray. You know, imagine, imagine one of you. You know, seriously, seriously, imagine one of you. You have a child. And this child comes into this world. And he has nothing. And you work so hard. And you protect this child. And you clothe this child. And you feed this child. And you're there for this child all his life. And you watch him grow. And you watch him become a young man and a young woman. And then one day, just once, you come to your child and you say, Oh, my child, please, do you think you can help me out? Your child turns around and says, Get away from me, man. I'm too busy, bro. How would you feel? How would you feel? How does Allah feel when the time for salah enters? And yes, I know you're not saying it on your tongue. You're saying it through actions. Ya yeah, Allah, I'm busy. I'm busy, Allah. <clears throat> my brothers and my sisters, so much time we are wasting. Wallahi, wallahi, you know, I'm running out of time and I think the aircon turned off. Please, please, I'm begging you. Honestly, I'm begging you. Don't waste your life. You know, I don't benefit from this. Like I said, I don't get paid to be here. I'm not asking you for fame. I'm not asking you to tip. I'm not asking for anything. Please, for you, for your sake, I want you to change. I'm telling you, I've been around the world. I've tried. The only happiness you will ever have, it's with Allah. It's not a joke. The ulama of the past, used to say, by Allah, if the kings of the world, if they knew what we possessed in our hearts when it comes to the relationship with Allah, they would fight us with their swords. Look, how many celebrities are committing suicide? Why? They have everything you and I are running for. We want fame, we want status, we want cars, we want women. They have it. Yet they're killing themselves. Why? There's an emptiness, man. There's something missing in my heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, Allah bi dhikrillah, verily in the remembrance of Allah. What does the heart find? 
Allah says the heart finds rest. Allah didn't say happiness. You know why? Because if Allah said happiness, I'll be the first to stand up and say, you know, if Allah said happiness, I would argue that. Because people try to tell me that money doesn't bring happiness. Psh, give me a million pounds, I'll put a smile on your face like you've never seen before. Let's be real, man. People tell me girls don't bring happiness. Come on, man. I don't know where you're going now, bro. But you should come to Sydney. I'll take you to the right places. People try to tell me that drugs don't bring happiness. I don't know what you're smoking, but it's obviously not good enough. Yeah, they bring happiness. But that don't bring peace to your heart, man. Look, you're sitting here now. Listening about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what? Half an hour? You didn't take a drug. You didn't pay a single dollar. You didn't have to stand in front of a single camera. But I am sure, with no doubt in my mind, that there's a feeling in your heart right now. You feel like, wallahi, if I died right now, I'll be the happiest person in the world. Half an hour! Half an hour! Imagine you spent a day like this. Imagine you spent a week like this. It's Iman. This is Deen. This is Deen. We've become lost. We've become confused. And I understand. We're trying to fill in in a rough world. I understand. Well, why I understand. You know, people attack all the time. Look at these sisters, man, they're wearing this hijab that's half hijab and half fringe. Now, yeah, I know it's wrong, but hey, at least she's halfway there. And you know what? I can see it. It's in her heart. She obviously wants to do it, but she wants to fit in. We're living in a tough world. We have an identity crisis. But my sister, I'm telling you, you will only find happiness with Allah. Please Allah. And Allah will make everything else around you happy. But you try to please the people around you, my sister. Trust me. Trust me. You're wasting your time. My sisters, please. You are valuable to this deen. I know that us men have a lot of shortcomings towards the sisters. Seriously, we do. You know, brothers, brothers always told me, and I'm not making excuses for, for the girls. Trust me, your time is coming after this, you know. I'm not making excuses for them. But brothers told me all the time, look at our girls, bro. Look at the way they dress. Look at the way they talk. Look at the way they act. You know why they act like that? Because of you. Now, I'm not justifying it for her. But the truth is, she knows that she won't knock on her door and ask her for marriage if she doesn't do that. Because every time you're out, where do your eyes travel? Where do your eyes travel? Be real with me, man. When was the last time any father sincerely when was the last time any father sat his daughter down and he said to her, you know what? You're the most beautiful woman in the world. No, we don't have that relationship with our daughters, do we? No, I'm a man's man. Forgive me, you're a donkey. <laughs> Seriously, because that's your daughter. If you don't make her feel special, if you don't make her feel beautiful, if you don't make her feel valued, there's a hundred thousand people that would love to take your daughter out. When was the last time you sat your daughter down and said to her, you know what, Habibi? When you get to the right age, wallahi, I'm going to find you the greatest husband in the world. Huh? Handbrakes. What? You want me to find her a husband? Why, whose job is that, you reckon? Whose job is that? You know what's killing us? Our filthy culture. We think we live in an Islamic culture. No, we don't. Our traditions and our culture of Pakistan and Lebanon and India, it's killing us. It's un-Islamic. 
women that are 30 years old and 35 sitting at home unmarried and her father and her husband so her father and her brothers walking around like everything's okay we're waiting for someone to knock on the door what do you think she is a vase piece of furniture that's a human being she has rights she has the right to feel loved she has the right to be with a man she has the right to have children she has the right to have a family but you're so preconditioned by your filthy culture that we don't go out and find husbands. No, we wait for them to knock on our doors. Then you come to me crying when Michael and John happen to elope with your daughter. Seriously, we've made marriage impossible. It's impossible to get married. We've made it impossible. Man, I'm out of time. Wallahi, I have so I want to share with you guys, man. Seriously. But my sister, all of these things don't change. Doesn't change the fact that you live for Allah, not for your father or your husband or your children. You live for Allah, my sister. Your honor and your dignity should be your absolute number one priority. Don't worry about how these men see you. Worry about how Allah sees you. <coughs> you know, forgive me. You know, I walked through to walk out. And I smelled so many fragrances from the sister's side. Again, you know, again, it's just, it's our direction, man. We are so, so lost. You know, my sister, and I say this with love. Because I know you mean well. But my sister, did you know that when any one of you sprays on a fragrance and leaves her house, every man that smells your fragrance, the Prophet of Allah says, you fall in the sin of zina with that man. Is that worth it for you, my sister? How many of our women spray perfume on day and night? Anyway, I can talk on about, let's bring it back, yeah? We need the, we need Allah. And I'm not asking anyone to become a scholar. I'm just asking you to make a move in the right direction. Allah says, my slave, when you come to me a hand span, I come to you an arm's length. Allah says, my slave, when you come to me walking, I come to you running. Allah says, my slave, when you remember me, I remember you. Allah says, my slave, when you forget me, I still remember you. I never forget you. Is this Allah not worthy of our worship? Is this Allah not worthy of my attention? So what are we asking for? Simple things, basic things. I'm asking you to get closer. For those of you who don't pray, establish your prayer. For those of you who salah, hey, look, I pray, but it's off and on. Make it permanently on. For those of you who told me, look, alhamdulillah, I pray my five prayers, but they're not at the right time. Ya khi, my brother, my sister, then make it at the right time. My sister, if you wear the scarf, but it's a half one, inshallah, make the intention to make it a full one. And if you don't wear the scarf at all, wallahi, then just an intention. It doesn't cost you anything. Sincerely with your heart, ask Allah, Ya Allah, make it easy for me to wear it. We need to change, we need to move. You're wasting your life. This Ummah is in need of every one of you. We're in need, we're dying. We need every one of you. You are important. So inshallah, because I know that I'm out of time, you really need to wrap up. What time do we have to be out of here? Nine o'clock. Give me two minutes, please. Because I don't like to waste. I want to hear some intentions from the brothers. I want to hear some intentions. Otherwise, really, what have we done? We sat here, we heard a nice talk, we got a little bit emotional, then we walk outside and it's like nothing ever happened, eh? No, I want to hear some intentions. And let me tell you why I need to hear some intentions. Because what happens to us is I'm sure every one of you is moved one way or another. Every one of you now is feeling maybe a little bit positive and I want to make a move. But what tends to happen is now shaitan is waiting for you outside. Oh, he's going to jump on you as soon as you walk out. Come, come, come. Did you get caught up with this big fat bloke and what he's saying? Come, come. Sit down and let me talk to you for a little minute. 
So we need to start making intentions. What sort of intentions? Realistic ones. Realistic ones. Don't see here and tell me, you know what, brother? As of today, I'm going to start reading 30 pages of Quran every single day. Let me tell you now, you already failed. Sit down, relax. No, small and steady wins the race. Come up with a realistic target. I'd rather you tell me, you know what? I'm going to read half a page of Quran every day. It's simple, it's achievable, it's not a burden, and you can do it. It's realistic. You might tell me, brother, I don't know how to read Arabic. Then go learn. And the problem is, is with our intentions, we're not specific. I'll give you an example. And I always say this to, to the brothers. This is very important what I'm telling you. <coughs> you need to make your intentions specific. You need to give it a time frame. And you also need to assign for yourself a penalty. You might be telling me, what do you mean a penalty? I'll give you an example. If I promise Allah tonight that, Ya Allah, as of this night, I'm going to start reading half a page of Quran every day. And if for whatever reason I miss, because we're naturally you will get busy one day, you will miss a day where you don't get to read your half a page. But now you need to apply your penalty. And your penalty needs to be a part of the promise and a part of the intention. That Ya Allah, when the day comes that I do miss my half a page of Quran, I promise you the next day, I'm going to make up for that half a page as a full page, plus the half a page for that day. And I'm going to pay 10 pounds or whatever, however much you think is a, a reasonable amount, and I'm going to pay 10 pounds in charity. You know when Shaitan sees you insisting and consistent on this, when the day comes that you are too busy and you can't read your half a page, trust me, Shaitan's going to pick up the mushaf, bring it to you, and tell you, brother and sister, please read your half a page, because tomorrow you're going to cost me two pages and 10 pounds in charity. <laughs> so very, very quickly, I want someone to raise up his hand, and I don't care what your intention is, as long as it's a step forward, then wallahi, this night has been successful. Who's ready to raise up his hand and tell me what his intention is, inshallah? Who's ready? From, from the young men. No one. I've wasted my, my time. I flew for 30 hours for no reason. What's your intention? To pray in the masjid more often. You need to be specific. Find a prayer that you know you can make and a wa'ad, a genuine promise with Allah that, Ya Allah, I will not miss this salah in the masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. Who else? Who else? Yes, brother. Learn to read Fajr properly. Learn to read? Fajr properly. Fajr properly. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept that for you. Who else inshallah? Come on. Come on. Let's, let's, let's not be like everyone. Here we came. We sat down for the talk and we went home. It's like nothing ever happened. Yes, my brother. To wake myself up. To wake yourself up and these two for Fajr. Who are these two? Your boys. <laughs> Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for you inshallah. Who else inshallah? Come on. Come on. I want to hear some good things. Now, nah, brother. I want to review two juz inshallah. You want to do what, sorry? Review two juz inshallah. You want to go over two ajza a day? That's big, man. That's 60 pages of Quran. <laughs> are you, okay, are you already strong in your Quran? Right, then usually for someone who's already strong, this is a realistic target. I ask about the exact. Do us. Now. I'll start doing, like, Qiyam regularly. Qiyam. Yeah, yeah. You have to be specific. I promise that Ya Allah at least two rakat. And if you come home and it's very late and you're afraid I'm not going to wake up, then pray the two rakat before you sleep. Yes? Who else? Who else, inshallah? What's wrong? Is everyone, everyone, everyone scared? Are you afraid I'm going to launch the mic? Who else, inshallah? One more. Now. He's just beat you to it, man. Now. What is it? Half a page? Half a page. Sincerely. I ask Allah to accept. Now, my exactly. Half a page of Quran from this day forward. Yeah? Intentions. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept you. Sorry about the screaming and the yelling. Wallahi, it's been very, very nice. I want to thank all the brothers that invited me. The Sheikh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. This community is amazing. All the brothers and the sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and accept you all. Subhanahu wa ta'ala.